Hey, what's up? I'm Liz. This is Blitzday DIY. And if you've been with the channel for a little bit, you might remember I soldered up this uh, 3D Christmas tree kit from uh, the Pie Hut last year. And I put in these slow color changing RGB LEDs. And I kind of became fascinated with them. It's a really simple way to bring um, RGB into your project because they're just your traditional LEDs. They have an anode, a cathode, and basically there is a small tiny little chip that allows the colors to change between the three uh, filaments for red, green, and blue. But not only that, because of the chip that's in there, it kind of creates this PWM effect so that you get these really cool kind of in-between colors that can mix together. Um, and you can achieve this by just providing power and ground to the LED. You don't have to have like an at tiny or an Arduino or anything like that in your circuit. So it's a really easy, uh, space-saving, time-saving way to bring color into your project. So I've been playing around a lot with them lately. Uh, and I thought to the point that it might be helpful to have a video and if nothing else, it'll intro kind of the next project I'm working on. Uh, so these on the, on the tree here are the three millimeter var variant. These are the five millimeter variant, so just slightly bigger. Uh, still takes uh, three volts on average and pulls about 20 uh, milliamps each LED. Uh, same, same power requirements for each one. Uh, so the reason why I've been testing these is I have been thinking for a while that I want to do a really simple PCB for the holidays where it basically looks like a, a bobble ornament, a circle and like a little like notch on the top so you could hang it from a tree. Uh, and I want it to, of course, light up. And I thought about a couple of things. Uh, I thought about doing some PWM with a 555 timer, uh, doing kind of like a variant on um, my badge design, and just trying to think of something cool to do so that it looked interesting, but also wasn't drawing a lot of power. Uh, so, which is really tricky. And uh, I'm gonna be honest, I, I'm pretty, I'm still pretty new at doing that kind of thing. So all of a sudden, I remembered these slow changing RGB LEDs and I thought I could just solder a bunch of these on the PCB, have a resistor for each LED and just throw a coin cell on there for power and we're in business. Uh, so I've decided to do that. But first I wanted to test to see what was going to be the ideal battery and resistor setup so that these LEDs will have the, will look the best aesthetically uh, for the the ornament. So I wanted to test these. In theory, they were in spec with a 2032 coin cell battery. It was the right voltage. Uh, the number of LEDs I was using were within the um, amperage uh, that the battery could provide. But I wanted to test in real time to see how the number of LEDs I wanted to use would act um, in a real world scenario with this battery, um, with different resistance applied, uh, just to see how everything would work so that it wouldn't come time to like throw on the PCB and yeah, the circuit works in theory. I plugged it into the battery that one time and it totally um, powered up, but then find out it only lasts for like 15 minutes to get the fancy colors, or maybe it, they just don't look as good because the power is kind of off. So. That's why I decided to do this testing rather than just doing calculations or just doing a quick test to see, yep, they turn on. Uh, and the way I tested the battery, uh, as you can see, is a super, super sleek way where I took uh, two bits of wire, some electrical tape, and then icing on the cake, a nice wooden clothespin to clamp them to the battery. <laughs> and then I plug them into the breadboard. Uh, let's take a look how the different uh, resistance affects these LEDs and see how they kind of perform in a real world scenario. Okay, so we have some different value resistors right now. Right now we have a single 2032 coin cell battery. Um, so we've got 220 ohm right here, 470, 1K, and 10K. Uh, and one thing that I learned about these LEDs is that how they perform is definitely relative to amount of voltage they're getting and and the amps that they're able to pull, which makes 100% sense. It's not exactly groundbreaking, but I thought it was interesting just to get kind of some real world 
examples of it going. Uh, you can see, obviously right now, the 220 ohm looks the best. Uh, you're getting that PWM, those in-between hues uh, as it changes color and everything, which is really what these LEDs are great for. 470, we're getting a little bit of that, but not as much. Um, once we go up to 1K with a single battery, we aren't getting that PWM. We're just going red to green to blue. If you really watch, you'll actually notice that it's just kind of instant. You get a slight fade, but you can see the individual filaments just um, turning on and off to go from red to green to blue and back again. And this is even more dramatic with the 10K resistor where you can barely see the filaments lighting up and they are just kind of turning on like a little switch going red to green to blue. Uh, now, obviously with these LEDs, you want that PWM effect. You want it to look like this crazy Christmas tree where you're getting all the colors. And especially when you get a lot of these going, um, it looks really cool. And I've been testing with nine LEDs because I think that's how many I'm gonna be having on the board that I make. So although the 220 ohm looks awesome right now, it on it's only gonna last for about an hour getting all of those colors because the blue pulls the highest voltage uh, it pulls 3.2 volts, so that's the first one to go. And how you know that your battery is actually going with these is that you start noticing that your blue is super, super dim, if not turning on at all, and you're basically just getting red and green. And for Christmas, you know, that kind of works out, but it's less than ideal. Uh, so then I tried with the 470 ohm with a single battery, and it lasted for about two hours, getting all the colors and continue to have PWM. And then it continued to last for another two hours after that with the, the blue being like barely there. Um, barely visible and I really didn't want to have the ornament especially where it's going to be uh, more than likely a, a gift for people uh, to die after that short amount of time. Uh, so then I started testing with the 1k and the 10k. As you can see the the 10k it's, it's not even worth it really. Uh, the 1k you know we're getting some decent brightness but we're not getting that PWM because it's just not getting enough voltage. So I decided to try two Cointel batteries, and uh, let me switch it up. Okay, so here's two batteries uh, just stacked um, powering these LEDs, and you can see there's a big difference with the resistance. We're still doing 220, 470, 1K, 10K. Uh, and you can kind of see that the 1K is basically operating so that it looks the same as the 470 um, ohm resistor. Uh, and that's awesome because uh, we just increased by one battery and we're getting the same kind of effect. The 220 is obviously looking the best because it's, it's pulling the most power right now. Uh, but uh, I ran a test last night where I had uh, nine of these LEDs on a 1K resistor with these two batteries and I didn't have any color degradation. And it was going for about five and a half hours before I just I just stopped running it. Uh, which is great. So I think for my final iteration, uh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna design it with two coin cell batteries, um, 1K resistors, and these LEDs, because I think they looked uh, the best. And we're getting some really awesome PWM action, those in-between hues uh, that really make these LEDs pop. And I think they look comparable to how the LEDs on the tree look, and that's plugged into wall power. Now, two coin cell, it's not like the most ideal design, but they do make these holders that kind of stack uh, the batteries together and they fit the same footprint as a single coin cell. So that means for the design, if people just want to solder in a battery clip that holds one 2032 cell, you could do that. It's not a big deal. Or you could do the two and you could get the full power. But I think that they're, it looks the best with two batteries uh, as far as keeping it running for a long uh, time. What I thought was funny is the 10K, It's uh, we're still just getting the kind of single filaments to light up, um, which is interesting in general just because you can kind of get a better idea of how the LEDs are working um, and you can kind of s look at uh, the filament without, uh, you know, blinding yourself. Now, uh, you probably could have just done some math and used some equipment and figured it out that way. You don't necessarily have to like run the batteries uh, in real time to see how it's gonna work, but that's personally how I learn and where I'm going for something that's pure aesthetics uh, 
that's that's why I wanted to do this. And I thought, you know, maybe people will be interested to see how these do work in real life, especially with a coin cell battery. Because it's not just powering an LED with these. You do have kind of this tiny little circuit inside the LED, so you're kind of checking to see how it works. And the resistor becomes part of this circuit um, that's going on inside the LED. And similar to when you're doing um, prototyping on a breadboard, um, using the different resistors is obviously going to give you different effects. So that's how I kind of approached this testing. Uh, I hope it was helpful for you. I'll be updating how the PCB design phase of this goes, and also Blitz Bad City, the finale, uh, will be coming soon as well. Um, so yeah, just some slow changing RGB LEDs. I'll link the ones that I use down in the description just because I've had good luck with them. I've gotten some nice effects out of them. And now to end, let's just take in the pretty ever-changing colors. <laughs> 